So a couple of months ago, I made a video detailing how you can make a dashboard like this. And essentially all it is, is utilizing the YouTube API, the GitHub API, and some other APIs to fetch real-time data. And that video was good. All of that worked and it still works. But one of the problems I noticed was for the Strava API. And the issue is the Strava access key expires after I think four or six hours. So it works, but only for that amount of time. Then when the access key expires, it fails to fetch the data. So in this video, we're going to revisit that. And I'm going to show you how you can use a refresh key to request a new access code so that you can always fetch the data. So here is an example on my website. As you can see, the data is still there. And if I do a hard reset, we still get the data. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video, this line here. So if you don't already have a Strava application, go ahead and create one. You can navigate to strava.com slash settings slash API, and you can create it right there. And then the keys we're going to need are the client ID, the client secret, the access token, and the refresh token. So initially we'll use the access token, but at the end of the video, when we finish everything, we won't be using that at all. We'll be using this refresh token to get a new access token. So here is my code for this project. It is just a blank Next.js application. So I'm gonna open up the API folder and just create a new file called strava.js. So let me define my function. We'll say export default async, pass in our request and our response, and make sure you don't forget the arrow notation just like that. Now the first thing that we need for this request are the headers. So, so these are pretty basic headers. I'm just going to paste them in like that. Next, we need the body of the request. So I'm going to say const body, and this will be equal to JSON dot stringify. So that's just taking uh, JavaScript objects and converting that to JSON. And then inside of here, we can pass in our parameters. So ins inside the body, we need the client ID. And this client ID will pass in through the .env file. So you're going to want to create a file .env and add all of your codes in there. So the Strava client ID, the Strava secret key, and the Strava refresh token. Once again, they can be found here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for my application and I'll be back when that is complete. All right, so I added all of my keys and closed that file out. Now it's important to restart your server if it's running, and if it's not running, go ahead and start that. And you'll see we loaded our environment variables from that file. All right, now back to this. So we can access that client ID variable by process dot env dot and then we named that strava underscore client id and that client id isn't really secret uh, but i just like to add it in there anyways Next, we have the client secret key. And we can grab this the same way, except we named this Strava underscore secret. And then next, we have the refresh token. Again, this is from process.env dot strava underscore refresh 
underscore token. And make sure to spell that right. And then finally, because this is our request to reauthorize our token, we need to pass in the grant type, which is refresh token. Okay, perfect. Now let's drop below that body. And this is where we are actually going to do the fetching. So we'll say const, we'll name this reauthorize response. That will be equal to await. We'll say fetch. And the URL that we're fetching is right here. And that is just taken from the documentation. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Then we can say comma. And we can pass in additional parameters. So the method is post. Be sure to add this. That's a common mistake. That will give you an error if it's not post. The headers are these headers that we put above. And the body is this variable here. So this right here will fetch this URL and it will grab us the access token right here. So instead of hard coding the access token in, this will communicate with Strava, see if the access token that we already have is expired. If it is, it will grab another one. If it's not, it will still return an access token that we can use. All right, so once we have that access token, we can use it to fetch the data that we want. But we actually don't have that token yet, so let's grab that out of this response variable. So I'm going to say const, we'll call this reauth json is equal to await uh, reauthorized response dot json. So this is the variable for our access token. So next we can use that. So we'll say const response is equal to await fetch. And I'm going to copy and paste the URL. Here we go. So again, I'm getting this URL from the Strava API documentation. So we're fetching their API version 3, their athletes root. This is my athlete code. We're getting the stats. And then here we're passing in the access code, which is that reauth json and we can grab the access token off of that by dot access token just like that so now we have the response in this variable here let's first convert that to json so we'll say const json is equal to await response dot json and then this object here this json is the json response that has the run count the distance the bike count all that data that we want so we can use so we can extract the data that we want out of that so i'll put a screenshot of what that response looks like so you know where i'm getting this next part from so let's say const Let's grab the count and the distance, and that's from JSON dot all run totals, and then we'll say const. Then the moving time that is from JSON dot all run totals dot moving underscore time just like that and then finally we need to return that so we can access it in our application and display it to the user so we'll say return 
res dot status of 200 dot json and we'll just say count comma distance comma moving time and there we go so this is the complete code last time we just had this part which worked because we are passing in our access token here but Again, like I said, it was hard coded. So when that expired, this would fail and we wouldn't get anything back. Now we are we added this code which will get the access token using our refresh token. So that even when the access token expires, we can just get a new one and use that. Alright, so let's go ahead and test this out. One of the nice things about Next.js is that I don't have to code up a view to actually see if this is working. I can simply go here, go to slash API slash Strava. In this, I should be able to see the JSON response. Okay, so we're getting an internal service error. And if I go to my terminal, so it can't read the count because it's undefined. So I'm going to guess that we have some sort of spelling error. Yes, so see client ID. This should be client like that. Now we go back here and refresh. There we go. So as you can see, we're getting a JSON response. We're getting the count, the distance, and the moving time. And we can verify that that is indeed correct by going to my website and the count 2056 is the same. The other two stats will be a little off because I converted them to miles and hours and the response here is I believe kilometers and seconds. So the final step is to actually display this to the user. So I'm not actually going to do that in this video because I already like I said made a video with that so I'll link in the description and the card right now to that video so if you want to see how to grab that on the client side view and display that to the user you can do that there anyways thanks for watching guys i hope you learned how to interact with the strava api and generate a new access token with your refresh token so that it will always work if you enjoyed please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.